Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show. Today, we have three very special guests who have all individually been guests on this show. We're just merging episodes together, all from home during quarantine. We have Swish, we have Elliot, we have Farouk in <laughs> on this virtual talk. How are you guys doing, first and foremost? Who's supposed to talk first? <laughs> <laughs> You jump, you jump over one another to one person. It's, it's like um, it's like a hundred meter dash where whoever gets the best. True. Like, how are you just doing? a prerequisite. This podcast is gonna be messy, guys. <laughs> just go. Let's go by um. Just go by, by like, name. Or yeah, by name or some shit. Ellie, go first. You're E. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm lovely. Thanks for having me, Buster. As always. You're very well. I'm excited to see how this podcast goes. Me too. The energy is at an all-time high right now. Swish, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, uh, I feel like I'm well-rested now after a solid eight-hour nap that I got, and I'm in Toronto, so I could not be more happy. <laughs> yeah, sorry, not a nap, sorry. An eight-hour sleep, my bad. <laughs> you said an eight-hour nap. My bad, my bad, but yeah. <laughs> Farouk, how have your uh, eight-hour naps been? <laughs> Bro, I'm doing great. Honestly, just chilling in Montreal. So yeah, thanks for having me again. And just chilling, man. Yeah, the naps have been good, honestly. Naps have been good. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I've been sleeping. I've been sleeping. Feels good. Amazing. Now, first thing I wanna talk about, since we are still in quarantine, I don't know how much longer it's gonna last, but it has been, I guess, like one and a half to two months now. What have you guys uh, seen as like your best personal strategy to like being more efficient, being better during this. Swish, I'll go to you first. Totally, yeah. I mean, I think first of all, I feel more productive being at home. Um, I just feel like all the external distractions of going out and dinners that are unnecessary have been taken out of my life now. So just being in the apartment, obviously with Onyx, who, who's running True Fan with me, that's been really great for us. Like I just feel way more productive. But at the same time, too, like it's also become really hard to separate my work from my life because like my office and my bedroom isn't like the same place. Um, so it's kind of tough yeah. to like delineate between the two and to like, you know, sometimes you're working too much. Sometimes you're not working too much. It's really hard to find like the middle ground. Um, so I think for me, like mainly just my calendar, I've been checking it like the night before every single day and just going through and saying, hey, am I actually like balancing not only working, but like taking up a new hobby, going back to something I used to really like doing. Like Elliot knows I loved writing growing up. So I'm actually starting to write a lot more, like just stuff that makes me happy, not even stuff that I'm posting. So that's been good to be able to do. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. Elliot, what about you? Well, what was the question? I blanked out. It's <laughs> such a wonderful answer by Swift, I guess. I got mesmerized by How are you staying productive <laughs> during quarantine? Right? Um, yeah. Or efficient with you. I, I think it's kind of a, for me, it's like a, it's, it's a definition question of like what productive means. I think for me, quarantine's been more of a time to kind of find myself and, <clears throat> and unlearn things. So being productive has been not being productive in a way and not working so much. So. Hmm. I've enjoyed doing that a lot. But if you're working on yourself, you can argue that you're being productive. That's true. true. That's true. Because I just pulled I, up the definition on the Merriam-Webster. <laughs> you mentioned definition. I like. To, I'm a man of words. So productive, effective, definition productive, having the quality or power of producing, especially in abundance. It doesn't mean money. Abundance can be happiness or like fulfilling like your soul. You know what I mean? Like so, if he's like thinking and growing inside, he's being productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think my biggest thing has been trying not to think. It's like, it's been like the realizations that I've been getting over the past couple of weeks. It's like, we're so caught up in thinking and I've been, it's like, there's levels to this. It's like, I thought I was on a path towards like spirituality and like enlightenment in a way. And I was like, I'm aware all of our thoughts are repetitive. But then I got to a point where I was overthinking a lot of things and now I'm kind of transcending that in a way where I'm realizing, oh, I was just analyzing myself thinking. So it was like layers to this. So it's like kind of mm -hmm. 
they call it like unpeeling the onion in a sense. So that's, I don't know if that answers the question at all or if it answers Farouk's definition of unproductive, <laughs> but I've enjoyed quarantine. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, totally. One of the things that I've noticed too is it's like usually what takes you away from your thoughts are like hanging out with friends and doing like outside activities and playing basketball and like going out and doing these things. But then quarantine just takes it all away. And it's like, here you yeah. go. Here are your thoughts. You can't escape them. Good luck. And that's, I think, yeah. what, that's what I've noticed quarantine be. But on the flip side, it's like, okay, now you have some time to focus on some other things. So maybe it's like working on yourself. Maybe it's like working on yeah. one part of your life that you never had the time to make more efficient or whether it's like, building a team like whatever you want to use that time for just like using it for something and it's impossible not to because literally if you sat on your couch all day apart from just like the positive impact uh, on like the world's not spreading this this virus or whatever like you are you're just you're just doing like you're watching movies like you're enjoying yourself at a time when some people aren't so um that's that's what i've noticed uh I it's definitely a time to be able to work on things yeah, and I don't want to steal anything, but I think it's interesting to hear also the Farouk answers is like what you guys think of of the whole concept of like being productive and then almost stressing over being productive, right? Like I feel like that's a really, really, really like I feel like that's something that I got caught up in is like overthinking being productive because everyone else is not being productive and it's this little little yeah, conundrum. Found- what do you think? Yeah. I found that like someone was actually asking me um, we were talking back and forth and we pinpointed where some days I feel like I'm hyper and some days I feel very down and you were talking about a certain balance that's hard to find Buster and you're absolutely right and I agree with that I think it's kind of applies to everyone like you have some days where you're high up and some days you're very low on energy and I've had trouble balancing myself whereas I got used to living a very balanced life last three years like it's sort of built routines you know wake up at this time I did this and I was never super strict on myself but I was like living a routine right but this kind of like broke everything down because like Swish is saying we and I'm gonna put it in a way where you know we're, we're I'm gonna put in these words part of my French but it's like we're you uh we're eating where we shit and we're working where we sleep you know what I mean that's what's happening mm. right now so it's hard <laughs> to like find that balance between yeah. work chilling you know just this sure. and that I think that's what's happening. But mm. on a personal level, let's go back to your question, Buster. Like I've just been working on myself. I like just doing. I, I, you know, I'm just thinking a lot for sure. I can relate to you on that one. And uh, and just building, honestly, building this year. I was already kind of building my own personal brand, doing my own thing, and that's what I'm doing in quarantine. No better time, you know. Just having a lot of fun with everything. I, I, I'm not like setting rules to myself. I don't tell myself you'll wake up at five today. You wake up at seven today. Wake up at sleep at that time. I sleep when I sleep. I wake up when I wake up. I work out when I work out. I eat when I eat and I work when I work. As I long as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I'm becoming better every day. That's it. No, I think I, I think it. that's great. Um, and I, I like I liked Elliot's question too about or, or point on like being productive because you think you have to be at all times. Mm-hmm. And then you just drive yourself to not being happy because it's impossible to be because you physically can't be productive 24 hours in a day. Like you have Mm -hmm. to, you have to relax. You have to watch a TV show. Like you can't not do those things. Like you got to watch the last Mm -hmm. dance. You got to watch the last (laughs) dance. You got to, you got to watch that cat video on TikTok. Like you just got to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think people put it as like, uh, like no you gotta you know work 24 7 and I put that into my own head I'm sure you know you guys do as well um, and that's just because we want to yeah. accomplish the things that we want to do for the reasons that we do you know okay. and it's hard to get yourself on a different page from that and take the like the little breaks here and there um, but I, I think I do think that it is important to have hobbies and I think that's like one of the ways that I've found being able to do it like one of mine right now is sports cards so i'm able to like take that break and i i do in the back of my head still consider it work because i'm like doing work things around it but i like 
purely just enjoy it. So I think that's that's also big as well, just finding like hobbies. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, you read my mind, but so I was gonna ask you guys what you kind of have picked up on or want to pick up on. Swish, obviously, the writing, which is like a big liberator, I think, for a lot of people. Like writing down, like I don't know if you do it as well. Well, for Ruth and Buster, it's like writing down thoughts. Like, yeah, I use my personal feel liberated profile. after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel so free when I write. Like when I write some, I like one of those large captions you might see on my page. Like it's just like it's just how it's my way since the beginning. I started just to just let it out, mm -hmm. like, and it feels so fucking good because I feel like your thoughts and you, Elliot, Buster, Swish. All of your thoughts are very valuable. Whatever you're thinking, whether it's professional or personal, and you write it down, I know it has value into it. It's very deep and real. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I can just put it out there and 100 people are going to see it too and then change them, then I'll do it. You know, that's the only difference. Yeah. But I think you guys should be doing that too. Try and put those thoughts out there because they're good. And they're pure because if you write them at a moment where it comes from a good place, you know? Yeah. So I think whatever it is, let's say Swish, you're having a lot of anxiety, stress over whatever meeting you just had. Fucking, I know you're writing it out there. Put it in there and show like that true side. And then you've done it, Buster. Same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to, when I write a lot, I mean, so I text myself a lot to make myself also feel very yeah. popular. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I have. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> what? Wow, <laughs> unreal. Um, no, but I text myself like spontaneously, like literally, like maybe 50 times a day. I text myself, but then to the yesterday, like I took all of my texts and I put it into this sheet of paper. Whoa. And like it's so small, like they're just like just thoughts all over. And like now I look back at it this morning, I literally wrote it last night and I, I can't even understand what the hell I wrote. Like I can see like a couple of words and catch back to that train of thought. <laughs> but I feel like what I like about this is like you can start developing kind of new trains of thought just by looking at this from a fresh perspective. Like, I don't know, like if you write down a bunch of like really broken thoughts and like you come back to it, sometimes your brain just has a way of connecting them, which is, I don't know, pretty, pretty neat. That's extremely interesting. Yeah. So you're kind of like, it's the root of a tree that you're planting when you have those thoughts that you're writing down. And the next day with a fresh mind, you're kind of like feeding it. So it grows. Exactly. Yeah, like some, some, of the the are, yeah, some of the thoughts are like action items and I will get those done. I'll put that in like a to-do list. But like if it's a broken thought, like it's not a complete thought. I haven't, you know, it's something I have to think more about. I'll put it into like a sheet of paper, but surrounded with other things as well that I need to think of. And then just take some time out, whether it's in the morning or, you know, whenever. Like, it's right beside me on my table. I'll just take it out, look at it, and think, right? And, like, your mind will naturally, like, do things, which is so cool to either connect them together or to focus on only one of the thoughts and not the others because maybe that one's way more important and you've been thinking about it subconsciously. So, I don't know. It's just something I'm trying out, and I don't know. We'll see if it works. But, yeah. yeah I, think, I think that's interesting because normally – like, and I, I can speak from, you know, only my own experience on this, but like, I'll have too many ideas. Like, obviously we'll all have too many ideas to even begin to think about how to do any of them. <laughs> um, but when you write, when you, you guys, sorry, do you guys think oh, everyone gets the same amount of ideas? Uh, like you think every human is no. like given the same amount and then it's like the more you execute on, the more you get, or you just think it's like different. I think there are certain types of people that, think about things in like different ways. So I feel like some people, obviously, you know, everyone is their own person, but I feel like some people think about, all right, what do I have to do today? And then they go do it and then they relax. You know, it's like, all right, I got to go do this job. Now I'm tired. I'm going to go home and I'm going to relax and recuperate and repeat and adjust and modify and try to work up to the ladder and become, you know, a billionaire that way. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also the environment you're in too, right? Like I think a lot yeah. of people are, and I, I don't want to say rat race, but it is pretty much that. Like my parents would be an example of this. Like they're just caught in that daily grind and routine where they can't free their mind up to even think, right? Like they're just going through and doing the same thing over and over again. And they, like, that's why I think quarantine has been great for many people. Like just being able to step back, reflect and be like, am I happy? Do I like what I'm doing? These are the questions that you can think about just by being the confine of your house and not having to rush to a meeting at 9 a.m., not having to go for that dinner at 5, not having to go back home and continue working and then come back and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. 
but but back to the ideas point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> usually, yeah. Usually, if you don't write it down, it'll just disappear. And it's literally yes. gone unless for some reason one of the thousand ideas comes back through somebody else mentioning it. Oh, I had that idea. But if you write it down, then there's hope that one day you'll flip <laughs> back on the page and yeah. make it happen. Whereas otherwise, yeah. it is gone. That's the worst thing. Everyone should record and themselves and write their ideas all the time. It's tough, though. It's a very tough thing to do. I don't do it, but I should be doing it. Like, but I get too many ideas sometimes in the day. I go, I'll go crazy. <laughs> Like, it's just insane. I don't think everyone has ideas because I think that some people are genuinely, like, and I don't mean that in a uh, der derogatory way, can, are genuinely clueless. Yeah. Like, it happens, you know, and some people just don't have an idea. But maybe they just, I think you start getting a lot of ideas when you start understanding, like, yourself and what you like. Because you can have ideas about what? About work or about a movie or about this or that. You can have ideas about so many different things. It's, mm -hmm. it's too hard to, like, pinpoint. <laughs> I saw that photo you took, Ellie. It's probably going to be dope. <laughs> <laughs> I did that too, right, right yeah. on my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, Farouk. You look like a different person without the beard. I kind of, I kind of like the shift up. I, like, no, what you posted on Instagram the other day. Oh yeah, right. It was like two different people on the photos. Everyone said that. Bro, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how much facial hair will do. We all have roughly the same amount now. <laughs> oh man. So I would say uh, Buster's probably in the lead. Buster and Farouk. <laughs> I think Swish no, comes at a <laughs> second, third place, and I'm probably last right now. Well, you're going you're gonna to get a beard, Swish, when you hit puberty, don't worry. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> Shut up. I, fucking, I can't even grow. This is like, I can grow a creepy beard, bro. I can grow like a, gay, like a really lame mustache. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> very very I, very nice what is the first thing you guys are going to do after quarantine's over club what sir who said that, <laughs> what? What? Who said that bro what he was so quick with it you finished your sentence he said club like, just... <laughs> bro i hadn't even asked the question yet and he already said it yeah. <laughs> He hit the buzzer so fast. <laughs> no, but actually, like, I, I'm probably going to go out. <laughs> Too false start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Would, would, you guys, would you guys sit it out a bit and wait? Or would you jump into it? Because they won't open until yeah. we're safe. Clubs is the last thing that's going to open. But I'm I would travel. I'm saying when it's travel. officially, yeah. like, safe. Like, let's say nobody in the world has it. What are you doing? Bro, I'm gonna be dead. <laughs> Nobody in the world has it. What are you doing? Travel. I'm yeah, it's gonna be I'm a couple of, couple of uh, decades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Swish always the intellectual. <laughs> we must, we can't say anything. He's just gonna murder. He's just gonna murder us. Like, I yeah, love hypothetical. it. Hypothetical. All right, Elliot, go ahead. <laughs> it was already hypothetical before you said hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> It was right, hypothetical. <laughs> Yo, that is too funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Farouk, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix this. Hold on. Oh, there. Sorry. Uh, first thing I'm doing, I'm traveling. I was used to being in the air for two years, bro. And now all of a sudden, I can't. I'm like locked down in a place I'm not allowed to, to travel. You know what I mean? But it yeah. feels good, though. It's great. It's the greatest thing that happened to me in a long time. Uh, but, but still, like, first thing, like, let's say nobody has it, I'm out. I'm going to go somewhere really fun. And I'm gonna like take a break from having a long break. So she's like, and then you're gonna go to the club. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. I'm not. I'm not gonna stay inside. I'm not gonna work on something. Like I'm gonna drop this and take a, even a break from Instagram for a week and just <laughs> go a week. Good. A week is a lot. <laughs> Elliot, what are you? What are you doing post very hypothetical quarantine? <laughs> Hypothetic, hypothetical travel probably. <laughs> um, hoop us hoop us yeah potentially it's like I just want to just kind of travel freely for just by myself I've never done that around the world I think you learn a lot <laughs> of yourself and others it's kind of like probably one of the more liberating things you can do says the man who hasn't done it but that's, that's what <laughs> I would do do you know where you'd want to go through Europe 
I want to explore Africa. And um, for some reason, Brazil speaks to me. <laughs> That's awesome. That would be yeah. dope. Yeah. Brazil sounds yeah. dope. Playing soccer, football on the beach of Copacabana, bro. Shit. That sounds oh, like yeah. a vibe. I'm joining. Oh, I like the way you said that. Copacabana. You said that in cool Copacabana. <laughs> no yeah i think i think all that would be good i miss like here here where i am in connecticut they like took down all the basketball rims so i can't even play basketball by myself so it's like whoo whoa yeah that so i'm sucks. looking forward to just playing by myself so what's the first thing you're doing post court post very hypothetical quarantine I'm shooting by myself on a basketball. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking for nothing. <laughs> I'm asking for the bare minimum. <laughs> Can I please just get a hoop? Yeah, literally. And I would have done it here at, at my family's place, but it's all gravel. And I'm thinking about putting down sport, like sport court, so I could put like a hoop mm. behind it. But um, I haven't done it yet. Well, bro, you got a hoop right behind you. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it really I fulfills my, uh, <laughs> my, quenches my thirst. <laughs> we get, we got to get this man's a hoop, guys. We got to get this man's a hoop. Send your address. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not going to send my address on this uh, podcast. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you can inquire directly if you work for Sport Court or any of the basketball. If someone can send this guy a hoop, he's going to promote the shit out of you and he'll be big. <laughs> Fucking network for basketball. So let's go. Someone says that who? How 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 are you guys able? Because I'm not able. So I'm asking your advice on this. How are you guys able to put down the phone and devices? Silence <laughs> for the first time on this podcast. Yeah, I just. <laughs> in, a in a hypothetical world. No. Yeah, this is in a real uh, world. No more hypotheticals. <laughs> um. I mentioned that my screen time has gone down quite a bit, which I'm happy about. Like, I, I'm averaging maybe, like, like five, six hours a week. Maybe yesterday was a lot more because I definitely was, was posting a lot more on Instagram. But um, A day. A, yeah. Sorry, a day. My bad. Yeah, not, not, not a week. My bad. Five <laughs> hours a year. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> but I've been using my laptop, actually, a lot more. I don't know why. I, just, I, I don't have iMessage on it either. Um, and, I obviously, I don't go on Instagram on my desktop. Um, so, I just feel like I'm being a little more... I guess productive when I'm on my laptop or then when I do want to use my phone, then I keep my phone in the living room and it's charging and you know, I just don't use it there. I don't know. Farouk, what about you? I said earlier, I don't restrict myself during quarantine. So, and I, I do everything on my phone. So whenever I want to put it down, I'll put it down. And whenever I don't want to put it down, I don't put it down. Like really like, I don't, cause I know if I, but it's just like, I need to be active right now for what I'm doing anyways. Fair. Part of what I'm working on. My grind right now is actually being on this device as much as I can being active. And if I'm tired, like the other day, I think it was like on Friday, last Friday, I was like burnt from the whole giveaway thing. Like I was just did a lot on my personal brand. It's just too much. I was averaging eight hours a day on Instagram alone for three days. I just literally didn't go on my phone the whole Friday, almost a whole day. And then I went to bed at 9 30 PM. That's it. You know? So it Bye. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Elliot, what about you? I think naturally it just hasn't hasn't been as much as <clears throat> as before. I think I've been trying to limit work, which has been which has been liberating. I think setting routines, right? Like coming up with I think that's something that a lot of people have found during quarantine is like somewhat of a routine. So like try not to use it in the morning up until at least ten AM. Just like working out, you know, taking the dog out, just doing watering flowers around the apartment, you know, doing like normal things. It kind of, it, it centers me a lot more. I have nothing against the phone. I think it has, it, it has its uses. Like it's a beautiful tool, but, but I, people can I think a routine to, to answer your question is like routine. Like, But people can do normal things right now. Like me, let's say, I mean, your country, you're not too confined, but, or you're not confined, but even me, I'm lucky because I'm in the home with the backyard and I can walk around, but people right yeah. now can do normal things. Like 99% yeah. of people like in an apartment building, see, if you were in your apartment building in New York right now, it'd be a different story. 
I live like, in a condo. <laughs> right, right now in Toronto. Yeah, I'm, it must be yeah. super tough. Yeah, yeah. I realized my balcony also has mosquitoes, so I couldn't even go outside on the balcony. They're back. You can fight the mosquitoes off. Bro, I literally was like, where's the spray? I'm going to like go and kill them all, but no. <laughs> <laughs> like, did not happen. <laughs> if it's a balcony and it's open, that means every mosquito has the opportunity to come to your balcony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I realized that very quickly when I saw more of them flock towards me. <laughs> that sounds very scary. <laughs> I know, man. Yes. I was shocked. I didn't know they were back. It's like Voldemort and Harry Potter. I'm back. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, man. I've just been on a Harry Potter grind as well. So was, oh, you have? You've been watching yeah, or reading? I've been rewatching all of them. I don't. I don't. Harry like Potter them. looking ass. <laughs> what are you talking about? You said you, Ferg. I <laughs> guy looks like he was in the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! He had long hair in the Goblet of Fire. He did. <laughs> I'm gonna check it out. Review the tapes on he that one. I'm going to rescue you. Okay, wait. We'll review right now. Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, he fire. actually looks like it's like a Persian Harry Potter. A oh, goblet of fire. Okay. Oh, he's damn! The, like he does Persian, have long like hair. how they make translations <laughs> for every country. He's yeah. like the translated version. Oh no! Here it is. Look at ah! it. That's <laughs> Farouk. That is <laughs> you. That's literally you. There's no difference. It's like. Yeah, they just took up a picture. You just took a selfie and took this morning. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. Okay. That's true. No, it's true. It's true. I get it. I've had that before. That's hilarious. You're a good looking guy, man. You should be living. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud. Right, you're practically oh a movie star. <laughs> that is funny. Um, I, I have a question, and I'm curious how you guys' answers will differentiate. I already know Swish's answer, but I, I think I know Farouk's answer. I don't know Elliot's answer to this one. Um, what's your favorite social media platform and why? <laughs> we'll go with Elliot because you already know ours, and they're obvious. Yeah, Elliot, Elliot, what's, what, what's your thought? It used to be TikTok. <clears throat> I think creativity-wise and... Just the way that the platform is formed, it, it allows for creativity, it allows creators to actually post, to not overthink, to make things from like a more pure, pure state. But recently I've also become aware that it, it, it brings equally as much garbage onto the platform. It brings equally as much low, low quality content. So I'm indifferent, mm -hmm. but it was TikTok up until probably a month ago. And now? I don't know. <laughs> um, 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 YouTube. I like YouTube. I, it's just like, if it can be classified as a social platform, I would probably yeah. use YouTube. Like, a lot of things you can learn on there. <clears throat> a lot. But it's also a, a time consumer. Like, that shit can like, <laughs> drag you in for hours. <laughs> yeah, I feel like YouTube is like a thorough amalgamation of every other platform because you can YouTube's gonna be the king forever yeah, forever in terms of like because they have a search engine like right? google or youtube mm -hmm. like you, you can they were based on a search engine which is what facebook always zuckerberg's dream was always to create a search engine within his platform facebook and instagram even when igtv he at first you could search up people it never popped off it never worked they tried with that and they failed and on Facebook, you don't Facebook something. You don't search something on Facebook. You Google something, and Google will always be the king, and so will YouTube be. If you ask me in a hierarchy, they're always going to be a top. And my favorite platform mm -hmm. is Instagram, so don't get me wrong. I'm the biggest Instagram fan. Is it married still? To the gram, but it still is. Still married to the gram. Always will be. Always will <laughs> preach it, even more now than, than before. And because at the end of the day, Instagram right now, what do you see on Instagram when you open? You see TikToks, tweets, Snapchats, other things, everything. Instagram has become the hub. Instagram is literally, the, to me, is the rock of every personal brand is Instagram. And I know they're mm -hmm. all important. And Elliot, Elliot Swish, you're about to talk about LinkedIn, but I'm talking about the rock. Swish is I, bubbling with my over Instagram, with I can build my logo. LinkedIn, my YouTube. <laughs> with Instagram, I'll build a LinkedIn, a Facebook, a YouTube, and a fucking Snapchat. Mm. Not, with link, not the other way around. I think. 
Swish is trying to pretend he hears your point, but he's about to go off and talk about LinkedIn. <laughs> it's just, it all went through and out. <laughs> he's like, interesting point. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, hit me, Swish. Yeah, so, no, Instagram's cool. Uh, I'm not going to say but, but. Um, <laughs> he said cool. And, and <laughs> no, obviously I like LinkedIn. I, I think for the work that I do specifically, LinkedIn yeah. just helped me dramatically. Um, I think LinkedIn also continues to have a white space that Instagram just doesn't. Like, I think Instagram has become very niche. LinkedIn, you can still be very wide and you can talk about a wide array of topics. And as long as you're consistently posting and, you know, your content is mildly good, like you've written it in the proper way or your videos are, are well made, you can go pretty well on, on, that, on that platform. And I think it's just the best for business wise, right? Like, I, I just think on Instagram, like for sure, reaching out to people is a lot easier, like DMing people is definitely easier. But on LinkedIn, like given the fact that I can immediately see your entire profile and your experiences and what you've done, it's just a no brainer to me in terms of like business opportunities that come from that, whether it's, you know, work wise speaking, you know, your personal brand collaborations that you want to do. Um, I just find LinkedIn to be a lot easier. I think LinkedIn is great for the professional side of things. Like if I want to reach out right now to like, let's say with good life, I want to reach out to like someone at Ferrari. Yeah. I'm not going to go on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's the other way around when you say, when you say Instagram has become very niche, like or niche, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how you pronounce it as niche. Um, I think it's the other way around. I think LinkedIn is very niche business because me right now, good life. I want to launch outreach Cartier role like that. I'll go on LinkedIn a hundred percent, but totally. for everything else, bro, like, cause it, LinkedIn are like, there's bots on every platform, which is annoying. And that's a very big conversation right now on Instagram, especially, but like LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, <laughs> I'm not the biggest at all, but I still have a certain base. It's all, it's crazy. The messages, like it's not even a social yeah. network anymore because like the networking side of it is just like flooded with like bots and, and like, sure. Like, you know, bots, bots know. are an issue. Bots are an issue on Instagram too, though. And yeah, like, of course, also, but in the comment would, section. Totally. But I would also say that like my other big issue that I have with Instagram is like people claim it's like this haven for creativity, but like you go and take a look at most of the creators you love and they're just selling themselves out. Like, I just, I just yeah. don't see the authenticity. Whereas on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. like no one does a sponsored post on LinkedIn. Like I've done maybe one and that was so weird. Like, you're like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I see. So like, it's just such a, it's a different platform. Like when people share content on LinkedIn, they're not doing it because they, they're doing it for a brand. Normally they're just doing it because they actually learned something through the week and they just wanted to share it or they've had a terrible experience and, and they wanted to like get it off their chest, you know, and they do it in a very authentic way. I feel but again, like the best creators tend to win on Instagram when they are authentic. Yeah, yeah well, the creators which, will go wherever there's attention. So, which one is yours, Buster? I love, I love YouTube. I think YouTube yeah. is the most authentic because, like, what Swish was talking about, it's like, yeah, you don't really see sponsored, like, you don't see sponsored posts on LinkedIn because nobody has enough followers to do it. I think if people yeah. did and there were creators, people would do sponsored posts because everyone just wants money. Yeah. Um, and everybody has to make money for their family, for whatever. You got to make something. Yeah. You can't, you know, yeah. not do anything ever. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas on YouTube, like the way I think about it is like, all right, who's doing, who's protecting their brand the most while still succeeding? And Google created something that Facebook hasn't been able to recreate in the same way. Uh, mm. LinkedIn hasn't been able to recreate TikTok hasn't, you know, they have like donations on, you know, IG lives, but people with millions of followers get 20 bucks after streaming for three hours. Um, but YouTube has an ad system, you know, they have an ad split, you know, with, with through Google, through Google AdSense and yeah. it allows creators to make the exact content that they want to make and profit off of it. And even if your content's inappropriate, but it still does well, like, an example would be David Dobrik, who makes very yeah. everything through monetization, makes millions of dollars through merch. You know, mm -hmm. it opens up all these avenues where people protect their brand much more because they because the, the value is different than on Instagram, where like even myself, I'll be guilty of if a brand hits me up and is like, yo, can you wear the sweatshirt in a thing and it's it's worth my while, I'll just do it instead mm -hmm. of and I, I think some YouTubers do that. I mean, all YouTubers do that on Instagram as well, but we're talking about the platforms, not the people. Yeah, um, yeah. You build a cult following on YouTube, a real, real family, a real following on you. Like I've always said, 
that I, if you give me the choice, a million followers on YouTube, Instagram, anywhere, I'll pick YouTube. If but, you have one choice, I'm giving you the choice to have a million followers or servers on TikTok or whatever, you pick one, I would pick YouTube. From a monetary standpoint, first of all, which is way bigger, the fan base is much more in tune with you. It's so real. It's like, it's so hard to shoot a YouTube video. But here's why that's the only answer. And I think Elliot and Swish would choose the same because YouTube, like, it's not just about having a million on YouTube. If you have a million on YouTube, you automatically yeah. have 300,000 everywhere else. 100%. Yeah. Automatically. 100%. I mean, the answer is wrong. <laughs> Except for LinkedIn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Swish would still choose LinkedIn. I mean, Swish, would you would choose you? a million on LinkedIn yeah, yeah, over? Yeah, you could, bro. Like, you could have like ten million on LinkedIn, but have like two hundred followers on Instagram. Like, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Man. You wouldn't choose a million on. Who has a no. million on LinkedIn? I think honestly, and this is a good point. Like, I'm about Obama. to hit. <laughs> Gary, yeah, Gary has like three mil, four mil yeah. on LinkedIn. But, like, to be fair, when you take a look at even at their posts, like, I don't know, I feel like I've also tapped out on a lot of the benefits from LinkedIn, despite not being at a million. Like, you know, like, my posts tend to do fairly the same. Like, yeah. I reach similar eyeballs. I have a good community built up. Like, I don't know what would be different if I had a million versus on YouTube. Like, I think there is the, the scale that comes with it, right? Like, the way the algorithm's built out, the way that people on YouTube go and follow you on other platforms, like you mentioned, it's totally different. Yeah, I feel like on YouTube, like, let's just compare YouTube to TikTok real quick. On TikTok, it does not matter the amount of followers you have. It just matters the quality of the video. Whereas on YouTube, it still definitely matters the quality of the video and the watch time and everything of that nature and how you caption all the little things. But once you're in and you get, like, minimum 50 to 100,000 views, it's very easy to get an extra 50,000 here, an extra 100,000 here. Right. regardless of the quality of the video being the same yeah. as somebody who has 10 subscribers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they grow so fast on every platform. YouTubers engagement on Instagram. I used to study these guys back then when I was growing. I would always study YouTubers on Instagram. Their engagement was always crazy. They would have the most comments, the most likes, crazy. They would always be the guys with like 5 to 10% engagement. It's, it's, I, I, the thing about that, though, I've noticed that for TikTokers, too. TikTokers on Instagram, yeah, engagement. Facts. Facts. It's weird. I we think know, in Greg general, Madison Ray is growing on Instagram. We're up to like 15 mil, like that. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, I don't know how it is for uh, LinkedIn people on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not existing. <laughs> but um, sorry. But I, I do notice that people from every other platform who grow audience on other platforms, and then people just follow them on Instagram because <laughs> they, they like them somewhere else. It does a lot better because those. Here's, here's what I think it is, I, and to switch this company's name, I think those are your true fans because they actually went on hey. their own and went out and followed you as opposed to conveniently followed you. Totally. Yep. I like that. So the I just got a weird notification I don't I never get. On all the other platforms. So <laughs> <laughs> I never get this ever. What I is just that? got this. Gary Vaynerchuk just went live on LinkedIn. I got that notice as we're speaking about LinkedIn. It's the weirdest thing that just happened. <laughs> no, we should, we should add him into the chat. <laughs> it's so weird on LinkedIn. Really, that's funny. Going live on LinkedIn is a weird thing, man. <laughs> Ooh, well, LinkedIn. What are, what are your best tips to grow for anybody who's wondering, like, how the hell do you do it, Swish? On LinkedIn, I mean, you guys have done it, too. Like, I think you, like, you guys have seen some good posts. And I think you no, know you're why. the LinkedIn pro. Bro, like 100,000 likes on a post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to yeah. answer that one, not us. <laughs> I mean, I think the, the first thing right off the bat is just like, like you, there's three buckets of content, right? The first are like, you know, informational postings that you have a competitive advantage in. So you know something that other people don't. And I see your post a lot, Buster, and I think you do a really good job of this, in sharing things that you know a lot about and just giving a tidbit or a nugget of information. That's always number one. Like if you can do that daily and like put out, here's like one tip for how students can build up their network. Here's one tip on what to do if you're feeling lost or anxious. Like for, you do this in your Instagram stories. Like if you converted your Instagram stories and the copy that you have there or your recent caption that you just posted on top of your photo, it's perfectly worded. Just drop it into LinkedIn and see what happens, right? And I know I told Elliot that too. And, and I know some of his posts like did fairly 100%. well because the way that you guys talk on Instagram is so relatable. It's so direct. It's not fluffy, um, which is what I actually sometimes have an issue of doing is I speak with a lot of fluff on LinkedIn. Um, you guys beat through the noise, which is really good. 
The second thing is discussion questions. Like I literally just made a post yesterday. I told people, if you could go back to your early 20s, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself? And I think the reason why that went fairly viral, like I think we're at like 50,000 or 60,000 views now under 24 okay. hours is because like people want to share their opinion, right? Like when you have an answer to a question, you want to answer that. Like, like I made a post a long time ago, and this is kind of where I started thinking about discussion questions. Mm. I had no clue what Bitcoin was. Like I remember Elliot and I, I was in Singapore and he was like, bro, we need to put money. In Bitcoin. It was like, it was like 10 K or something or nine K. I mean, it wasn't even at like the 19 or 20. I mean, now, now what is it? Uh, now that was a bad. It's, it's lower now. Look at that now. Like 75. It's, 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 <laughs> it's at, uh, it's at, um, 7.7 K. Right. So like, obviously, it's bad, but, but at the same time, like I had no clue what it was and I made a posting like yeah. everyone, can someone explain to me what Bitcoin is? And a bunch of people, again, because when you know something, you want to answer it. You want to show your network yeah. that you know the answer to that question. So that was number two. And then number three was something that I think I did fairly well compared to other people that started posting on LinkedIn is personal anecdotes. The sharing things like not only the wins that you've had, like great moments, but equally like failures and things that have just gone really bad for you. Whether that's through a video, like I remember one of the early videos we did was the Let's Get Honest campaign, where we talked about vulnerabilities we had in the workplace, things that we were insecure about. And we nominated people and that, that campaign went fairly viral because it was another level of authenticity that the platform hadn't seen before. Uh, and again, it's super ripe for stuff like that even now. But you see right now, that's what bothers me with LinkedIn. I'm going to flip my screen around. I'm on your LinkedIn. I pulled it up. Also, <laughs> People God see, no, it. but also, because now we're all on our computer. So, so see, what bothers me is I go on your LinkedIn. I want to read your posts. Since the mm. time you started talking about your post, I still haven't yep. found your fucking post. Yeah, like, you have to go to activity. You know what I mean? LinkedIn Farouk, is so hard. Farouk. Like, where is it? Farouk, really quick, under people also viewed, Justin Trudeau just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. But see, where is your post? Are you That's running for mayor? I, <laughs> I wish, bro. Oh, my God. Um, if you go to activity, if you go to activity, like go up a little. No, right, right. It should be like, like see posts. See? Somewhere around here. I can't actually see your screen. Let me just go. Yeah, here. I don't know. But see, I don't know. Yeah. I just find it so complicated to find stuff on LinkedIn. I don't know. It's just. It's definitely more difficult. Like, they could make a better, like, UI. No? UI. Yeah, they really can. Think? They really because you're but into that with profile and stuff. So the reason know. why too is because like they're primarily still a professional platform, right? They're all about networking and connecting with people, right? Um, but yeah, I do think like they're they're at 675 million users. They're going to be at a billion in the next 12 to 18 months, I think. Um, Definitely a market been growing. Yeah, so like I do think that you know take your guys' captions like honestly and just put them on. You're right. No, you've always said that. You've actually said that for years. You the same yeah. way. You, we've been preaching our own platforms. We've been preaching that actually, by the way, the biggest influence on LinkedIn is Richard Branson in 2019. He had 15 mil. He's at 17 now. Yeah. See the biggest the influence thing. on LinkedIn is Richard Branson. But here's the thing, which is cool. And to note is that used to be the case when you logged in, you'd see all of these recommended influencers that'd be like Barack Obama and shit. Oh yeah. Say, well, what the hell now the reason like I'm actually growing about two to three K a day off LinkedIn. What? Yeah. What? I'm literally Whoa. about to hit 100k today. Like, I'm yeah. going to hit 100k today. Like, no. Crazy. No, see, but it yeah, only just started, like, a week and a half ago. Like, I was plateauing at, like, 78. Like, I was at 78 just plateauing. And then, what are you at all now? sudden now, when people sign in in Canada or in India, I don't know why India, don't tell me, but, like, when people sign in in India or Canada now, they get a recommended influencers list that also has, like, micro influencers people that are like smaller in their following that you should rec like you should click follow immediately too and is that and I know one of my friends, alan in the us too they do that did does the algorithm algorithm put that together or do people at linkedin put that together people at linkedin put that together Got for it. now but i think eventually where they're going is the algorithm will show you like like a list of people you should follow and it's not just going to be richard branson and stuff like that here's where Don't i think TikTok, I mean, uh, right back guys, I'm get some water real quick. <laughs> I think LinkedIn is super interesting in the sense of like, there's no other platform that has, I think the most powerful thing on social media is the Facebook share button. Number one, yes. because yes. it shares to your entire network immediately on feed. Yes. And then that, you know, like, like in a like let's say like a pyramid like a pyramid scheme like a share is at the top of the pyramid scheme well then what about a retweet but 
Twitter, like not that many people, like virality of videos mm -hmm. on Facebook are on another level of virality than I have ever yeah. seen on Twitter. And I think that yeah. stems from the share rather than on Twitter it does. Of course, me. I see. Um, but so I, I think apart from that, the like on LinkedIn holds so much weight <laughs> because the like yeah. on LinkedIn is pretty damn close to what a share is on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, because no one really shares posts on LinkedIn, but when, when somebody likes a post on LinkedIn, it'll come up on your feed too. Like you'll be like, oh, why my friend just liked this post and it, and it popped up. Um, so it, again, it's not easy to go viral on LinkedIn. I just think compared to the other platforms I've seen, I, I just do think it's fairly straightforward. Like as long as you can speak relatively good English and you know, you're putting <laughs> everything through Grammarly and your videos are not like, blurry i just think like if you constantly share things that come from true like noble intention like you're not trying to bullshit people but you're speaking off of your experiences and you're trying to give them something of value whether it's a lesson in whatever it is you do or it's a tip on you, you as an operator or professional it's bound to go viral yeah and i think hmm. too an interesting point is that like like you mentioned it's not easy to go viral like of course like if it was easy then there would be no such thing as viral True. But I just, I've seen so many idiots on LinkedIn also go viral. So like, I just yeah. don't think it's that hard to go viral on LinkedIn. <laughs> like, yeah. I see yeah. a lot of people and I'm just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen it too. Yeah. <laughs> you can control, I mean, viral and there's viral and viral, right? Like you can, there's like, and what I mean by that is like, there's generally going viral and there's also controlled virality and planned. And, and we all know here that we can plan virality, like if easily. Right, mm -hmm. but it's just like yeah, genuinely viral. Though I think it's hard. Like genuine viral is the hardest thing you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, hardest thing. Yeah, like you can, like you, like if you know the right people, you can make anything go viral, which means oh, yeah. it hits people's audiences who are pre-existing, which you can guarantee. Yeah. But for real, the yeah. part you're talking about is like when you don't have that audience. Yeah, and you're pulling that in from the outside world, and they don't give a fuck about you they should nor should they why would they why would they they're, yeah they're they're seeing this stuff outside of their you know outside of themselves being owned by another audience so I, that that's hard Definitely. it is yeah i like youtube <laughs> <laughs> that was the answer to the question huh <laughs> That, that was, was the answer. Well, that was nice. Um, uh, what what kind of content have you guys been consuming for fun? Some shows here and there, some movies here and there. Um, you know, trying to go back to like old movies that I want to rewatch and stuff like here. Like not you know TikToks when I want to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm, I guess that kind of content, you know, just to like phase out, you know? Yeah. Switch to no you more. TikToks before your nap? No, I don't, I'm not on, I'm not on TikTok. It I, puts I, you to I, sleep I, like You're not that. on TikTok? Swish, you should, you should, you should, you should translate the way you're giving us advice to translate our Instagram captions. You, you should TikTok. translate your t LinkedIn posts to TikTok. I think that would bring tremendous value in terms of like, yeah. Yeah, and you could easily do it. It's just like step by step. You I am work. willing to bet you that if you translate all, like Elliot just said, and you're doing that, I think there is a very, I think there's a fifty-fifty chance you will hit a hundred thousand first on TikTok. Hundred yeah. percent. I'm literally like eight hundred away. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> like, well, there's, there's, still a you, <laughs> there's there's literally a chance you have one video that hits thirty million views, and you have just like three videos, four videos, five videos before people just like do a story hard. time. But but you gotta hang up right now and make it. And just there's do it. Not a lot of time. Yeah. There's and a lot of Indians following you. Tick right now. It's like I'm yeah. On LinkedIn. Dude, I I wrote, guaranteed though, two hundred k. If you did it, you would hit two hundred k first on TikTok. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, do, a story it. I'll time. do it. I'll make sure. I'll make sure I do it. I'll do it like later this week for sure. Um, I'll take some of the most like viral posts I made on LinkedIn and just replicate it for for TikTok. But I, I you know, yeah. I do have an account. I just don't post anything. I don't follow yeah. anything. Very nice of you. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm a loyal supporter. Um, but Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King was a show that I... Uh, oh, my God. I watched that, too. That blew my mind. Like, that That's is what? the last dance, obviously. But Tiger King? I haven't seen that. Elliot, have you seen it? Two episodes. I haven't finished it. It's, it's very hard it's to, to hang into it. It's very hard to hang on, to grasp onto it. But what's fascinating me at Tiger King is not the show itself. It's the fact that it's nine years of documentation put together. Yeah. Yeah. They document, they had nine years, think yeah. about that, into six episodes. And that's what went viral, actually. Speaking of virality, the reason it went viral, maybe it was pushed a bit. Maybe there's a whole campaign. I don't want to talk about that side. But like, the reason everyone's obsessed with the Tiger King is that it's an eccentric person. There's you have a character, yeah. a personality that's, yeah. oh, what the fuck? On top of the fact that it's nine years, bro, they had to go through all of that to make that documentary. Yeah. You know, because he's not Jordan. Yeah. yeah, Jordan will go big, but the, yeah. of course, it's that documentation aspect to it, and he's narrating it himself. But he's not Jordan. It's Joe Exotic with the Tigers in Florida. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's different. So it's that fact. That was it's pretty a story, and it's footage of the stories. Like everyone's got. That's that why story I watched tell, it, right? Yeah, I didn't like it that much, but that's yeah. why I watched it because I was like, well, it's interesting. Like it was so funny it. because the director was like, oh, yeah, I came to this town to uh, do a documentary about tigers, and then I found this crazy lunatic. <laughs> like, you must have been so happy. Can you imagine? Like, you're going to go and be like, oh, yeah, National Geographic, whatever, and you're like, whoa, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, it's ridiculous. Yes. That's I've been curveball. consuming the random. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the last dance, like, I actually thought so, I mean, maybe hopefully in the next couple of episodes they do that, but ESPN has been, like, touting it up and, like, unseen footage and stuff like that, and, like, relatively a lot of the footage has just been historical. Like, I haven't seen that much unseen footage yet, so I'm hoping that, like, because I know it's within the 1988 season, uh, 1998 mm-hmm. season, so I'm hoping that, like, when they get deeper into that season, especially the playoffs, there's, like, a lot more exclusive unseen footage. Yeah, what kind of footage were you – that's a good point. What kind of footage were you wanting to see? I think the pregame stuff. Like, I just loved getting, mm-hmm. like, locker room access. Hi. That was awesome. Like, seeing mm-hmm. Phil Jackson, like, I didn't know he meditated. I didn't know, like, some of his warm-up talks were, like – Fascinating. Like, you know, I, I didn't know MJ was, like – No, 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 wait. We can't I, spoil it. Oh, if wait. People yeah. are watching. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we watched I mean, it. <laughs> The Bulls win, but like <laughs> <laughs> MJ won, guys. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert! Can you imagine that? Oh one I'm gonna have to put that in the title of the podcast. <laughs> asterisk, asterisk. Spoiler alert! The Bulls win. <laughs> but that, that is true. What you said about Phil Jackson? Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. yeah the incense and all that. Elliot, who would you want to be? Yeah, actually, before but go ahead. Um, but I was just gonna say, who would you want to be if you could be? Um, one player on the team that you feel like really connected to? Steve Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, like that. Here, here's, here's why. One, in, well, not necessarily connected to in that, but in general, like he's the only one out of those guys that became a broadcaster. I always wanted to be a broadcaster. Um, he was a shooter. All I do is shoot. I don't take it in ever. I wish I did, but I don't. Um, yeah. And he had a successful coaching career, which, you know, I have Dang. not, but I respect that. I think that's cool. Um, you know, obviously we won't all want to be like Mike, but you know, sometimes you got to settle for Steve Kerr. That's a great, that's a great comparison. Um, Elliot, Fru- though, <laughs> or, or Farouk, who would you want to be? Yeah. I, I don't know enough about basketball and stuff like that to even pick someone I would want to be like. I don't know how to explain. Like, I watched The Last Dance. I think it's fascinating, but I, I'm learning a lot through it. Yeah. But personality-wise, who but do you, who I don't... you connect with? Jerry Krebs. <laughs> so far? No, so no. Jackson, for sure. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. Who, who do you think? I don't really know. Like, I love, like, I thought Jordan's drive and passion was like, I was like, whoa. Like, one thing that hit, I don't want to spoil this. I'm not going to say, but in the first episode where he's like talking about his ethic, I was like, that's crazy. That's what I aspire to be, but I can't say like Jordan, obviously, because everyone, like you said, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. You I love like Rodman's, I like Rodman's side of like, just be you, don't give a fuck, you know? Like, I love that side. That in like, that really had me like, I want to go rewatch three just because of that. 
actually. Mm. I would think about it. Like, start reading, like, I was like, that's so cool. Like, he's the guy that, like, you know, people judge him, people that, but, like, he, when he showed, like, he partied, and he pulled up, and he delivered. You know what I mean? I like that. Are you I referring guess. to the, him at the party or him at the game? Because he did both. <laughs> He did both. That's what I like. So I can't, I don't know. I don't know. I that like, switch I'm... after quarantine. He's going to party. And he's going to show up with Farouk. <laughs> you know, but Elliot, who do you, who do you, who do you associate more with? In the, in the documentary? Yeah. Maybe Phil Jackson. In a way. I'd like that's like the ideal, right? Right. Got to set ideals, but at the I current thought, moment, yeah. maybe Tony Kukoc or something. <laughs> He's never been in the dock. I'm kidding. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, Bill Wellington. <laughs> I thought big yeah. Like every time I every time I saw Dennis Rodman, I'd always think of Elliot a little bit, and it's not just because of the work that you've done with him, but like. I, I find both Same. of you guys actually like I kind of like a maverick in that way, right? Like you have your own type of like personality and your own lane that you kind of. You could fill. be his little cousin, dead ass. Like, true. yeah, I could see that, man. It's, like, a, it's a compliment. Think, really? Yeah, the way that you guys think and like process information and it's super unique. Like, I just even your nails thing. at some point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like to me, it was like, and yeah, I don't mean to talk about your him. thing before, but it's just I, I can, yeah. I can, I was like, yo, he's gonna pick Robin because he's so spiritual at the same time, but like Elliot always pulls through. Like regardless, he's always gonna fucking pull up. You know what I mean? Like he'll pull up. I, I canceled this. We canceled this podcast twice. Cancel, cancel, because he he needed his space. Cancel, needed his space. Cancel, needed his space. Just like Robin when he dipped to Vegas and pulled up. Yeah. Pulled up <laughs> <laughs> I guess a mix of Phil Jackson and Rodman then. Yeah, I liked how close they were actually. That was really inspiring. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah, I think Phil's point, and I wish he was a better GM or president for the Knicks because that would have been great. But to speak on his <laughs> coaching career, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that made him so special is that he was understanding. So, like, he understood, you know, Shaq and like mm. all of his things. He understood Kobe and like how crazy like in the opposite way of some other guys, Kobe was, and he understood, obviously, you see in the doc, Rodman, like being able to give him rope so that he can be successful, I think is something that not that many coaches have, if any, because their job is always on the line. It's the only job in basketball. It's the only person on the team who can be gone like that, that you can just, you can fire. You can't fire LeBron James. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's very admirable that with all of that being true, he's still able to like try to go with his gut and do something that no other team would ever allow in a million years. Could you imagine if somebody was like, I'm trying to think of a not that like Birdman Chris Anderson is like anything like Rodman, but like, could you imagine Eric Spolstra in like yeah. 2012 NBA Finals being like, "Yeah, go party and then yeah. come back"? No, yeah. that would never happen. Yeah. So I, I, I give tremendous credit to Phil Jackson for that. It seems that's why the documentary is so interesting. It's like, yeah, it's like a movie. It's it seems it's that's the thing that seems so untrue. It's like a movie. I guess like shit like that doesn't happen yeah. anymore. <laughs> and you've seen the clips individually, maybe Swish and stuff, but I think what's interesting is you, now you understand really the, the ties between Truly. those clips yeah. and those characters. And Very that's strange. what made a champion team. And when I was yeah. earlier, I was joking around, I said, yo, like I texted y'all, I said, yo, Elliot is raw, man. You know, I said, Buster's yeah. MJ, you know, because, you know, he's a fucking just a baller, he's a leader. And then you have like, you have like um, Manu. I said, I said, you're Pippin. And then, like, and then, like, because you guys are all goats, you know? And I was like, yeah. we're just going to fucking, like, build that team and get on the bus. Like, a, we're a full team lineup, you yeah. know? Yeah. And yeah. that's cool. Like, for me, because I'm not, again, I'm not a basketball fan. I didn't even understand your last 2012 reference at all. Clueless. <laughs> but, but, but the thing I see, it, like, a, I like it because I watch it because it's cool to see a team. It's cool to see the exterior. It's cool to see, like, a legend. I've been studying the greats, especially recently. Like, I it's because there's good and there's great. Like, you achieve greatness. MJ has achieved greatness, but not just MJ. Like, they asked in the show, would MJ have won without Rodman? And then Rodman said, I genuinely don't think so. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And it's just just him. But he wouldn't maybe have not done without Pippen or Phil Jackson and this and that. Like, never a coach, I guess, in basketball hasn't had such an impact, right? So it's just like, it's crazy. It's the whole team together. I think it's fascinating. Because it's yep. easy yeah. to go and play a single sport. It's easy to go and play fucking a one-on-one sport, you know? But a team sport like that, yep. where you have to have chemistry together throughout 82 matches, whew, mm-hmm. whether it's hockey, good whether point. it's basketball, it's phenomenal putting them together. Yeah, good point. Very good point. It's just that's what inspires me personally. I want to be the fucking nineties Bulls. And I never even <laughs> followed that, but I just want to be nineties Bulls now. I love I'm that. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke at the beginning, but I decided I was gonna wait until the end. When you were when you were naming us all off, I was just gonna be like, watches the last dance once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally, literally go for it. That's a viral piece of content. Watches the last dance like you have the fucking yeah. no shit. We're the 96 Chicago Bulls. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, like, I'm, I'm Michael Jordan, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like yeah, because I have Jordan once. Not even the yeah. sixes, like, I have once. <laughs> but I, I think I think that's like the power of like movies and documentary and good content is that like yeah like you watch i don't know travis scott's documentary oh i'm travis scott now you watch this oh i'm michael jordan you just got like you know oh, i'm steve but they're inspiring like, oh, it's like they're mm-hmm. inspiring I, I when swish posted a story true brilliant swish like, posted a story saying can't wait to see lebron's documentary in 40 years i can yeah can't wait to see kobe's documentary honestly <laughs> Do you think they had more cameras? Like, how, how much more camera equipment? Because they said they made it out to be very special as if this camera crew followed them around for that specific season, right? And they were there at all times. <clears throat> like, do you think someone like Kobe or first in peace, but, or, or LeBron has had with just, like, the advancement of technology? Like, how much more footage is there now than back then? Sure. I think is LeBron it going to be actually- as value? The quality of the content, maybe the cameras are much better, obviously, but like the technology will make it maybe more closer or better. I think the footage in the last dance was really good. Like, I think the the broadcast footage was like a little blurry, but like the actual close up shots were unbelievable. Like, cameras Um, weren't that bad. Um, but I think with LeBron, obviously, with Kobe's you know, sad situation, kids like passed away and all that, but with LeBron, like, knowing him probably. And like what he wants to do for, for his legacy, I would not be surprised if when he's determining his final season, he gets a camera crew to have all access to. Maybe he had it this season. No, Maybe, but like, like, the I don't know, but like I, I just think that's the type of thing he would do. Like he'd he'd give all access for like here's my final season as here's, a player. Here's what I think the difference is though. Back then, fans didn't have cameras. One, True. players True. didn't have cameras, and. Yeah. Their families and it like there there were just no cameras. There were yeah. the only way Jordan could have done that was like having a camera crew. Whereas LeBron now he doesn't need a camera crew in the hotel room. Selfie. Yeah, he's always making stories, anyways. Yeah, only, we already have the that camera. inside look in his life because we see Bronny doing TikToks. Mm-hmm. We see LeBron drinking his wine, singing every fucking rap lyric in the world, and I love it. Yeah. How does he and learn see, them so fast? Yeah, I know it's crazy. He's, and but we see more. Whereas he's not human. <laughs> yeah, I second that. But the thing is, Jordan, you never got to look into his personal life because you never had his Instagram. Whereas now we're already closer to the to them sure. in a way, sure. you know. So they're gonna have yeah, to. They, twist haven't, they haven't gone. They haven't gotten into like gambling or like he played poker. I think once on the private jet in the whole documentary so far. But like, I also love yeah. that they were like. The first rookie season, he came in, he saw Coke, and he just like left. It's like, no, you did, dude. Like, <laughs> come on, no, you Man, did. They all did it, but not me. But not me. But that's, I the, said, kind of, but that's the kind of footage we would have loved to see. Like, exactly. That's the kind of shit. All right, that's your point, huh? That's the yeah. Tiger King stuff. That's the Tiger King stuff, you know? Like, that's the weird, whack shit. Like, but I yeah, but like, they got to clean. They got to keep a brand. Jordan is more than the person. Is a yeah. multi-billion-dollar brand, so. You know, if you associate that to that, then the Jordan sales. I'm curious, though. Are you, all three of you, like, or in belief that Jordan is the GOAT? What? Are all three of you in belief that Jordan is the GOAT? Is oh, anyone here think we're going to have this conversation, are we? I'm just wondering, though, because, like, coming out of things, you know. Okay, <laughs> obviously, like, Ellie's probably going to say, like, Larry Bird. So like, <laughs> Ellie, who's the GOAT for you? Yeah, I have no yeah, opinion because I'm not knowledgeable enough. So, you guys. <laughs> I think, uh, I think, I think the, 
I'm dodging the question, but Magic Johnson would have been the greatest of all time. If Probably you look at his career trajectory. But yeah, I mean, I think I'm naturally inclined in saying LeBron because that's the, the era I grew up with, and that's the player I feel connected with. And it's hard to go back in time and analyze footage. That's for me personally. Mm. I I would say LeBron. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree that it's all based on who you grew up around. Um, like the, the like the sheer obvious test to do that to like see how impactful that is is you go back and you ask a thousand people who grew up watching Jordan who the goat is. You go you you ask a thousand people who watched LeBron, and it's in the high nineties for each of those um, percent wise yeah. on who thinks who's the goat. So mm-hmm. by default, I think uh, Michael Jordan had the better career than LeBron so far. LeBron is the better player because there's six titles or what? Is it a title thing? It's a title thing. And it's, uh, he played yeah. seasons than LeBron has already. Um, he retired in the middle of it and was still able to come back and, you know, with three before and three after. And then he, his two additional seasons were on a team that were booty. Um, yeah. He played at age 40 and he also went to college. So that took three years off on the front end. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was cool to watch by the way. UNC. Very yeah. inspiring when he's like go to school and then like, he stuck to his routine, stayed at his a nice house. He was focused on doing his thing. Like, I like that. But yeah, so yeah. I think when it's all said and done, LeBron will be widely regarded as the greatest basketball player of all time, whereas Michael had a better career. But a lot of guys had a better career. Not to d- diminish Michael Jordan, but I, in I, all I, sports, I on what area you're up in. It depends on the generation, like you said, because right now you can argue that it's much harder to make it pro than it was 30 years ago. And it's much harder to be the physical strength of human beings compared to 30 years ago is LeBron is one of the most, I think he's one of the greatest athletes of all time. And in those greatest athletes, so I compared to soccer, that's what I know more of. Like, because I'll compare it to soccer. Because, like, you could say Pelé is one of the Pelé, Brazilian legends, one of the greatest players of all time. People say that. Some people say Maradona. Maradona compared to Jordan type of generation. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. today you say Messi or, Ronaldo. Or, or, or Ronaldo. Some people argue so it's this generation versus people will say now Jordan, Kobe, Messi, Ronaldo and the versus Maradona. You know, like, it's just, I think it's a generation thing. Because Pelé used to score all these 10 goals per game, but it wasn't that hard to, like, where he was playing compared to, like, but still, yeah. like, He's one of the greatest because he yeah. innovated the game. He reinvented it. Yeah. It was different. The only very way was few, played. Yeah. There's only very few sports where I feel like generation doesn't matter. Like Gretzky for hockey, like he was on another level. Like I just yeah. don't understand he was a hack. Yeah. Um, Roger Federer for tennis, like I think it's undisputed. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? Wait, I mean, you disagree with that? <laughs> it's just a funny, I love the, I just love the wording of it. It's great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I mean, our tennis has a lot of competition in history. Tennis is, yeah. Lewis, Lewis yeah. Hamilton for F1 racing. Like, I don't know. That's, yeah, he's definitely, right. he's reached gold status. Yeah. Oh. For, for, I've for never watched. watched. I've never watched racing. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. It's fascinating. It's very F1? Yeah. F1's wild. I, it's boring as fuck, though, to watch in person. Yeah. Because <laughs> you only see them for half a second, right? Literally, it's like, oh, well, okay, it's time to get a hot dog. Yeah, but you said it seven times. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, just on the sports subject, but, like, does the fact that they require, like, a car make it less of a sport? No. Yeah. Like, tennis? Because, the, the, bro, these people lose three kilos. I don't know how many pounds is three kilos, but per race on water because they're yeah. fighting, like, fucking G-force and stuff, bro. Like, mm. it's just, like, it's just – it's it's definitely like a sport like the way they have to condition their bodies and the traveling every two weeks or every week they have a race in a different part of the world the whole season like it is a sport for sure all the nascar driving yeah respect that's pretty crazy i didn't know that <laughs> i changed my opinion golf though golf thoughts love it yeah I think so. I like it. Tiger Woods is uh, one of the goats too. Yeah. Maybe not for what he did. But after, but. <laughs> did you just like golf though? It's just like as if we're going to get into Forget it. golf. I yes, love it. Golf. golf. Indeed. Yes, putting. Yes. <laughs> no hating to golf. I love golf, really. 
Yeah, yeah well, I, one, one, one day I'll get into I'll get into golf. putting. That is good at golfing. Decent at golfing, yeah. <laughs> Do top golf, Buster. Like I like that like, they they have stuff like that now for recreational play to get people into golf. Oh, it is the first time you're going to go and do an 18 hole game. Like I feel like that's boring if you haven't played before. Yeah, it can be very long, and you'll hit it in the water a lot, like I do. Yeah, tough to pick up. You got to fight pretty- off. You got to fight off the alligators on it. Oh no, there's no yeah. alligators. Actually. They maintain the the pool side. Nice. What what are what are your guys' uh, personal goals for like and or more even professional? But they intertwine for the next couple of years, just so we can all look back at this. Wow! Yes. I'm gonna let you actually, actually like, I, I, all, 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 all started <laughs> off. Yeah. So. Uh, it's so not guys, fair. It's like life, life question. Yeah. <laughs> this is the final question. Talk what is the meaning of life? I wanted, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to give you half a second to catch your breath before it. Um, yeah. But my answer is, one, I want to have the best sports card collection in the world. And two, uh, I don't know. I just, I just want to have fun. I want to I enjoy what I'm doing. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, be doing this podcast again in you know a different format. Seeing all of my friends be successful, like all, all, all these little things, and just being uh, happy and not overworked. That that's that's really my goal. Swish. Um. Yeah, I mean, like a few years is a long time. Like I might change this answer in a month or in two months. Who knows? But this um, afternoon, <laughs> like yeah, this afternoon, literally after I become a star on TikTok. Um, but Swish is gonna I, pull up to the next podcast. Like, what's up, boys? TikTok, full merch, and everything. Like, what's up? <laughs> uh, what is I, up, guys? <laughs> the most immediate goal would definitely be like move my mom to Toronto. Um, that's something I wanted to do for some time now, and thankfully, she uh, thankfully, but also just sad, obviously, but she lost her job due to COVID. But I feel like that's like a blessing from God in disguise to like tell her to move now. Because the only Where's thing your mind? Calgary, Alberta. Terrible. Okay. Um, so she hates it, but she only lives there because of her job. And now that she doesn't have it, um, I'm like, this is great. Come to Toronto, live here, set, settle here. Um, the second thing I would love to finish writing a screenplay. I've, I've tried many times to go into final draft and to finish, but I've only gotten up to like five, six pages, which is very short. It's like, literally 5% of what a, a full feature film screenplay is and or about 20% of what a short film would look like. Um, and I think the third thing would, would probably be like eventually sell true fan. Um, that's kind of just a, a goal that I, I think that's going to pivot. Like once that happens, it's going to mark the next chapter of my life, whatever that is. But I think that's going to be like an incremental moment, hopefully if it happens. Awesome. Elliot, you? I think, uh, <laughs> see the fruits of my labor more like working is work right but when you look back at things and as you go along it's like I don't know small things like I put up a net at a basketball court right by me and just like driving by it you just like feel you feel invigorated by it so more offline things like doing more things in the real world I think for me I think learning an instrument is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Yeah. So. Um, but it goes back to Squish's point. Like, it can vary from time to time. I think we're all in a very transitional period in life. It's like, I mean, Buster, you're the youngest. You're ahead of everyone. But oh, yeah. it's like we're all in our early 20s. But for you, Buster, once again, you're ahead of everyone. <laughs> um, it's like, I don't know. I like... I like not having it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's great. And I was just going to say about the net thing, where are you, where are you when I need you, bro? <laughs> I need a basketball. Right. <laughs> Nets first. We'll do a court next. Sweet. For real, yeah. what about you? It was, the question was where you see yourself in a couple of years. Where do you want to see yourself? Where I want to see myself. I mean, like like everyone in this chat, I, I think 
we're all looking for like personal growth the next couple of years. So for sure, looking forward to that to see where else I can take, push myself in terms of like growth and like thoughts and like the way I, I interact and I am inside within myself, I think. But of course, like there's some goals that you said, they, they don't have, there's not a goal set that, oh, I want this, I want that. But it's just more like, I want to reach a certain level of like happiness a certain level, I'm not gonna lie, financial success. I'm not saying, oh, I wanna be worth 20 million in the next three years. No, that's a, to me is a bad mentality. But you know, it was financial success because in times like this, actually, I've been thinking a lot about that stuff as well. Financial health, you know, because if you have it, it can help you achieve more, to me, a certain level of freedom, but also help a lot of more people, you know, in a way, right? It sounds cheesy, but it's facts, like literally. You know, I wish I could walk to a food bank right now and buy like, a hundred thousand cans of whatever food and just give it away in the streets. Right. But I can't. Okay. So that's the thing. It's like that level and just keep growing, you know, every day, you know, right now I've, I've been in a phase in the last couple months where I'm really thinking about myself, what I want to do with my life, where I'm headed professionally and everything. So it's just like, find, I want to find one thing built, whether it's a product or anything. I even told you last time I was on with you. It's funny, but I just want to find one thing. I'm still looking for that thing. I'm not chasing it. I'm looking for it by living every day just to build over the next couple of years. Amazing. That's gonna have an impact in every level. I love it. My friends. Before we end. Yes. Could we point out that, you know, this has been a really awesome podcast to do across three countries as well. Oh the fact yeah. That we're able to do this is pretty, like I just thought about that. I'm just like, Oh what crap. Like at least in Sweden, like I'm in Canada you're in the U S like this is crazy. That's true. Technology. Pretty crazy. Yeah, tricontinental, tricontinental uh, podcast. Whoa, that's a good vocab word. Continental, continental, or continental? Continental. Yeah. That's you can call it the hypothetical world. <laughs> Try continental. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the fruit looks like Ross, but yeah, that's just it. <laughs> I love it. I don't take, I, but I don't take else. I'm just kidding, kidding. Love Russ. I fucking love Russ. It's just the internet doesn't, but I love him. <laughs> That's funny. Um, everybody, make sure to follow Manu Goswami on LinkedIn. <laughs> make sure to follow Farouk on Instagram. And Elliot, you have old vlogs and hopefully new vlogs on YouTube. I want to see more. Oh, I remember the those. They're fire. Those the were vlogs. fire. Bro, yeah, they're, they're fire. fire. Glogs, those are the best. Yeah, those, those are fun. Um, and Elliot, at Elliot on Instagram uh, and The Buster Show. So without any further ado, my friends, thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll keep, we'll keep Thank you, Buster, for making this happen, bro. Thank you for like pushing thank through you, and making it just getting it done. Woo! <laughs> hands emoji. God yes, bless Buster. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was basta. All right.